We're talking in these videos about listening and improving listening competence in different contexts, different situations. And in this video, we're going to focus on listening at work, uh, listening in our careers. And uh, this is an especially effective way to set ourselves apart in the workplace, because quite frankly, um, listening at work has been an epic fail for many, many years. We've done a face plant in terms of teaching people how to be effective and listening in the workplace. And, and we, we, this stems from a lot of different things, but really there's been a distinct lack of instruction in educational programs. We have not provided a lot of education on effective listening. And so people are entering the workforce and they're not effective listeners because they haven't been taught how this is a skill, just like anything else. We've got to teach people how to, how to be more effective listeners. And as an educational uh, system, we have failed to do that, uh, to teach people going through these systems how to be effective listeners. That's one aspect of the epic fail. Then we don't do any better job when we're when we get people in the career in, in, in the workplace. Uh, it's a it's a really overlooked aspect of training in the workplace. Um, employees em, employers don't like to spend a lot of time on soft skills in general, and certainly not on teaching how to be effective listeners. They figure people ought to just be able to do that on their own if they have enough incentive. But it's hard to do anything well if you haven't been taught how to do it well. So this has been an epic fail. Uh, listening in the workplace has been just a travesty uh, for generations now. So we need to improve this. So. Why is this important? What are the benefits of listening well at work? Well, first of all, it creates an open communication climate at work, in the workplace. People want to feel comfortable. They want to feel as though they are being heard, whether that's employees, whether that's customers, whether it's, you know, people working above or below you. They want to feel like they're they're heard and they have the opportunity to speak. And they're not going to do that if they don't feel like you're listening effectively or if anybody's listening effectively to them. So this creates a, an open communication climate when people have, people feel as though they can speak their mind and, and be heard and have somebody listen well to them. It creates that kind of open communication climate. This will also enhance sales performance. Customers want to be heard. They want to be listened to. They want to have people understand their message and, and, and respond to what it is they're saying effectively. So this can en enhance sales performance when you're able to listen well, that will stand out to the customer. It also promotes involvement in the workplace among the employees. Again, when people feel like they're being heard, when they feel like somebody's listening to them, they're more likely to be involved, to, to get and stay engaged in the workplace. So uh, it promotes involvement in the workplace amongst the employees. It increases motivation as well. Uh, this is a basic human thing. When, when we feel like we're being seen and being heard uh, effectively, then it increases that motivation for us to, to do well and to, to do more because we want to, to do things to deserve being heard like that, right? So it can increase employee motivation. So there are lots of reasons why we ought to encourage effective listening in the workplace and why we ought to help employees develop that skill. There's, there's plenty of benefit to the bottom line in helping people listen more effectively. So then what can we do to listen more effectively at work? What can we do to improve our listening at work? First of all, we can remove barriers to concentration. We can get rid of things that are going to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, are going to distract people. Get rid of, you know, we can make a, a, an environment that's conducive to listening. We can remove if, if TVs are a distraction, if, if construction noise is a distraction, whatever it is that's a distraction for people in the workplace, we can remove those barriers to concentration. We know that listening is hard work, so we can do what we can to eliminate some of those different barriers that we're aware of. And as we become aware of them, we can reduce the noise. And just in general, we can, again, reduce distraction. We can remove, remove those barriers to concentration and we can remove noise, whether it's uncomfortable chairs, whether it's a temperature issue that's keeping people from focusing, whether it's actual noise, audiological noise um, that people can't hear well enough, uh, th then we need to remove that kind of noise. Whatever kind of noise we come across, we need to get rid of it as much as possible. We need to encourage convergent language. We need to encourage people to to develop this, the same vocabulary. You know, the military is great about this. They, they, you know, in the military, you don't go to the kitchen, you go to the mess or the dining hall or whatever it is. We, you know, we need to encourage that kind of convergent language. When people start using that language, it's an indicator that they are buying into the group, that they want to be a part of that group. They're using language that is common to that group and is used by that group because they want to be a part of that group. That will help um, with listening as well. When we're in on the language, when we're in on the message, 
that'll help us listen more effectively. So we need to encourage that kind of convergent language and that shared uh, language. We need to create intentional listening spaces. You know, maybe you work in a factory or, or you work in a place that's just, just noisy and that's all there is to it. It's just, you know, it's just going to be noisy, but you can create spaces for listening, create spaces where people can go if they need a quiet space to be able to have a conversation and to listen. We can be intentional about creating those kind of spaces in the workplace as well so that people do have those places to retreat to when they have need to listen more effectively or to focus more effectively on that message. A couple more things we can do to improve listening at work. We can designate official listening opportunities, you know, quote unquote, official listening opportunities. We can uh, say, okay, I'm going to have a listening session. My, my office is going to be open from five to six. I'm going to put things away. I'm going to, or whatever time you want to call it. My, I'm going to put these other things away. I'm going to be available to people to just come in and talk. If they have something they want to share with me, um, then we can designate these official listening opportunities or, or you know, employee observations or evaluations are another good opportunity for this. We can designate those as listening opportunities as well. I want to listen to you and hear what you have to say. And I'm going to, again, put away these distractions. I'm going to shut down my email, put my phone on, on silent and not let it be a distraction. We're going to have these official listening opportunities. We can offer training. We've mentioned one of the fails that we've had is that we've not trained employees very effectively. Listening is not a natural skill. It is a learned skill. So we can spend some time in the workforce training people how to listen more effectively. And that can be um, very beneficial and a quick way we can improve listening at work as well. One of the biggest things we can do is just model effective listening as a leader, as a manager, as a supervisor, whatever your role is, we can model effective listening for others. We can show people what that looks like and and what a difference it can make and you'll be amazed people start to pick up on that quickly uh, when they see the impact that it can have so we can model that kind of effective listening in order to improve listening at work as well so those are a few quick things we can do to improve our listening at work and why we should do so um, this again is a quick way for you to stand out at work you know that old saying in the land of the blind the one-eyed man is king if you can listen well if you can listen even moderately well, you will set yourself apart from 90% of the workforce who does not listen well, because it isn't a skill that employers are looking for, and it's one that you can develop. So I encourage you to uh, take a look at what you can do to improve your listening skills in the workplace and use that as an opportunity to set yourself apart um, just by focusing in on, again, listening while you're at work.